Hello and welcome to our new video. In today's tutorial we will discuss one of the most common problems that arises during training of deep neural networks. It is called overfitting and it usually occurs when we increase the complexity of the network. In this video we will learn the most common techniques to reduce overfitting while training neural networks. So let's begin. When building a neural network our goal is to develop a model that performs well on the training data set, but also on the new data that it wasn't trained on. However, when our model is too complex, sometimes it can start to learn the irrelevant information in the data set. That means that the uh, model memorizes the noise that is closely related only to the training data set. In that case, the model is highly inaccurate because the memorized pattern does not reflect the important information present in the data. For such a model, we say that is overfitted and it is unable to generalize well to the new data. Yes, it has learned the features uh, of the training set extremely well, but if we give the model any data that slightly deviates from the exact data used uh, during training, it is unable to generalize and, it, and accurately, predict the, accurately predict the output. The best way to tell if your model is overfitted is to use the uh, validation data set during training. Then if you realize that the validation uh, metrics are considerably worse uh, then the training metrics you can be sure that your model is overfitted. The logical response to prevent overfitting can either be to stop the training process earlier or to reduce complexity of the network. However, in both of these cases the opposite problem called underfitting can occur. It happens when the model has not trained for enough time so it is unable to determine a meaningful relationship with, between the input and output variables. So, based on performance on both training and testing data, we classify our model into three categories. We have underfit model, and this, is, this model uh, can't learn the problem and performs poorly on both training and testing data set. We have overfit model, and this is model that uh, learns the training data set extremely well, but does not perform well on a testing data set. And we all, of course, we have optimal model, and this model learns the training data set very well, and also performs well on a testing data set. So, we learn what overfitting is. And now the question that we need to ask is how can we avoid this problem? Uh, well, to avoid overfitting we, uh, in the neural network uh, we can apply several techniques. Let's look at some of them. The first method that we can apply to avoid the overfitting is to decrease the complexity of the model. To do that we can simply remove layers and make the network smaller. Note that while removing layered layers, it is important to adjust the input and output dim dimensions of the remaining layers in the neural network. Another common approach to avoid overfitting is called early stopping. If you choose this method, your goal is very simple. You just need to stop the training process before the model starts learning the relevant information or noise. However, we mentioned uh, in the previous chapter that if you apply this method, you can end up with the opposite problem uh, called underfitting. And that is why uh, the main challenge of this approach is to find the right point just before your model starts to overfit. And we can see that uh, in this image. Here the green curve represents the training loss and the red curve represents the validation loss. As we can see, after several epochs, validation loss has started to increase while the training loss is still decreasing. 
Therefore, we can be sure that the model is overfitting and we can stop the training exactly at the point where validation loss has started to increase. Probably the easiest way to eliminate overfitting is to add more data. The more data we have in the training set, our model will be able to learn more. Also, with more data, we are hoping to, uh, to be adding more diversity to the training set as well. And data augmentation is the most popular technique that is used to increase the amount of data in the training set. To get more data, we just need to make minor alternations of our existing data set. Even though the changes that we are making are quite subtle, our network uh, will think uh, that these, these are distinct images. The benefit of data augmentation is that the model is unable to overfit all the samples and uh, it's, it's forced to generalize. The most common data augmentation techniques are flipping, translation, rotation, scaling, uh, changing brightness, adding noise, and etc. Another popular method that we can use to solve overfitting problem is called regularization. It is a technique that reduces the complexity of a model. The most common regularization method is to add a penalty to the loss function in, propor in proportion to the size of the weights in the model. In that way, the input parameters with larger coefficients are more penalized than the parameters with smaller coefficients. After applying this method, we will ev eventually limit the amount of variance in the model. There are a number of regularization method, uh, methods, but the most common techniques are called L1 and L2 regularization. The L1 penalty minimizes the absolute value of the weights, whereas the L2 penalty minimizes the squared value of the weights. Uh, this is mathematically shown in this equation. Here, the term we're adding to the loss is the sum of the square norms of the weight matrices, which is multiplied by a small constant lambda. Uh, it is called the regularization parameter. The other terms for this equation are n, which is number of layers, uh, w is a weight matrix for the eighth layer, and m is a number of inputs. Note uh, that this is another this lambda is another hyperparameter that uh, we'll have to tune in order to choose the correct number for our specific model. Uh, so the, the L2 regularization is a technique often used in a situations where data is too complex because it is able to learn inherent, inherent patterns present in the data. However, uh, a disadvantage of this method is that uh, it is not uh, robust to outliers. So, uh, regularization methods like L1 and L2 uh, reduce overfitting by modifying the cost function. On the other hand, dropout is a technique which modifies the network itself. It is a method uh, where a randomly selected neurons are ignored during training in each iteration. The idea behind this technique is that dropping different set, sets of neurons it's, it is equivalent uh, to training different uh, neural networks. For example, uh, let's assume that we train multiple models. Each of these models will learn the pattern from the data in different ways. So if each compo uh, component model learns a relationship from the data that contains the true signal with some addition of a noise, a combination of models should maintain the relationship of, uh, of the signal within the data while averaging out the noise. This approach could solve the problem of overfitting. However, training multiple models can take several days, and this is why we need some more efficient method uh, which will help us uh, to save a lot of time. Using the dropout method, we don't need to tune uh, to train uh, multiple models separately. 
we can build multiple representations of the rela relationship present in the data by randomly dropping neurons from the network during training. Then, at the end, the different networks will overfit in different ways, uh, so the net effort of dropout will be to reduce overfitting. This technique is shown uh, in this diagram. It has proven to reduce overfitting uh, to a variety of problems involving image classification, image segmentation, uh, word embeddings and semantic ma matching. During the last few years, the PyTorch became extremely popular for its simplicity. Implementation of dropout and L2 regularization techniques is a great example of how coding in PyTorch has become simple and easy. For our task, which at first glance seems to be very complicated, we just need two lines of code. To apply dropout, we just need to specify the, the additional dropout layer when we build our model. For that, we will use uh, the torch.nn.dropout class. And this class randomly deactivates some of the elements of the input tensor during training. The parameter p is the probability of a neuron being, a neuron being deactivated. Uh, and default of this parameter is equal to z uh, 0 0.5, uh, which means that uh, the proportion of neurons to drop out is equal to 50%. So if you want to drop like one quarter, we will put uh, 0 0.25. And uh, one important thing here is that outputs are scaled by a factor of 1 over 1 minus p, which means that during evaluation the module simply computes an, ide an identity function. So, as you can see in our experiment, we are going to train the uh, LANET5 model on the fashion MNIST dataset, which consists of 10 classes. And we can apply dropout after any non-output layer in our model. And here we will define our, our the dropout layer just before the first fully connected layer. So here we will just write nn dot dropout and that is it. Implementation of the L2 regularization uh, to the parameters of your model is very simple. It is already included in most optimizers, including Adam optimizer that we, we will use for our example. And to apply the L2, the L2 regularization, we can simply use the weight decay parameter inside of function optimAdam. Okay, so uh, for our experiment, we are going to create two optimizers. Uh, in the first optimizer, call optimizer one, the the weight decay parameter will be set to default value of zero. And in the second parameter, in the second optimizer, we will set the parameter to be equal to uh, uh, zero point zero 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 one, as you can see here. And now we are going to train our model two times. For the first model we will not apply any regularization methods and for the second model we will apply both dropout and L2 regularization. So let's train our model and compare accuracy between the regularized, uh, regularized version and the non-regularized version. As you can see, we achieved the validation accuracy of 89% with the model without regularization. And after, after applying dropout and L2 regularization, accuracy increased by 1%. And this may, be, may not be a big improvement, but keep in mind that we are using grayscale images and a relatively simple neural network. However, if we train a deeper network, such as, let's say, AlexNet, and use a dataset with colored images, 
the improvement would certainly be much greater. So in this video we talked about the problem of overfitting, which happens when a model learns the random fluctuations in the training data uh, to the extent that it negatively impacts the, uh, impacts the performance of the model on new data. And then uh, we learned several techniques that we can apply to reduce overfitting and we paid special attention to the regularization techniques like dropout and L2 regularization. And finally, we learned how to apply dropout and L2 regularization in PyTorch. So, if you like this video, uh, drop a like and subscribe to our, to our YouTube channel. Bye.